Through most of my childhood, I was called quiet and shy. As a result, I would commonly shy away from things that required the attention of a lot of people, convincing myself that the worst case scenario might happen and that I would embarrass myself in front of a lot of people. And I never really pushed back against that expectation. As a result, I never tried things that I really wanted to do and that I thought would be fun, such as trying out for the basketball team. Flash forward several years to now, if you ask someone who knew me how they would describe me, they would probably describe me as quiet but confident. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Tyler Warlow and I go by The Mengineer and I make videos on how to improve your life through your confidence, capabilities, and overall happiness. In today's video, I thought it would be good to discuss some of the things that I personally did to help improve my confidence and get me to where I am now from the shy kid that I used to be. If that sounds interesting to you, be sure to hit the like and subscribe to join me in this self-improvement journey. So the first thing that I did to improve my confidence was pushing myself to step outside of my comfort zone. So my journey of improving my confidence really started my senior year of high school, and that all started because I realized that I needed to get into college. I had gone most of my high school experience not really talking to any of my teachers or getting to know my peers except for my really close friends, and as a result, I hadn't really developed any relationships. And when I started looking into it, this thought terrified me because the college application process as I understood it meant that you had to get really good recommendations from your teachers or peers and activities that you participate in, which as I just stated, I didn't really have strong relationships with anyone. I started thinking about the ways that I could go about building relationships with my teachers and peers. And the first thing that I thought of at the time was simply just by participating in classroom activities more. I was the quiet kid that didn't really speak up unless called upon even if I knew the answer. So my senior year of high school, I started making it a point to start actively participating in the class more. If I had any questions or I was confused about things, I would go to my teachers afterwards and get clarification and show them that I really wanted to learn more. For me, this was a huge step because I was really uncomfortable going and talking to new people. But by doing this and getting to know the people and my teachers around me, it really helped improve my confidence and it proved to me that I wasn't going to embarrass myself. It was the first step that I took towards showing myself that stepping outside of your comfort zone and pushing yourself wasn't going to result in the worst case scenario in your mind. This helped me a lot, especially in my freshman year of college where I met my core group of friends. And speaking of college, that's gonna lead me into the next tip. A personal self-confidence issue that I struggled with a lot during high school was the fact that I was really tall and really skinny. And a lot of times people would typically call me scrawny. And I really didn't like that. I didn't really like being called something that to me had that negative connotation. So I kind of had a poor self image of myself in my mind, thinking myself as weak and shy. So the next step that I took to improve my confidence was exercising. Nowadays, I promote exercising for your health and your overall longevity, but when I first started getting into it, it was to improve how I looked. And I got the results that I wanted. I went from 135 pounds at the end of my senior year up to 175 pounds by the time that I graduated college, with a decent amount of that being muscle mass. This not only resulted in me overall feeling better and having more energy, but also made me feel more confident in my appearance. I highly recommend pursuing exercise as a way to improve your health first, and the way that your body looks will improve along with that. So do not focus on exercise as a way to improve how your body looks, because you're gonna set yourself up for failure by constantly comparing yourself to other people, and you really don't wanna do that. But the next thing that I did in college to improve my confidence was to improve my style. Pretty much all through high school, I just wore athletic shorts and some sort of neon jacket that I thought was the coolest thing back then. So when I got into college, I started trying to learn about ways to improve your style on a budget, especially given the fact that I wasn't making a whole lot of money at the time. I took advantage of thrift stores and H&M to get clothes at a pretty decent price. And I took my fiance and my friends along with me to give me their feedback on what they thought. This helped me to learn what might look good together because I didn't really have experience with that. But as I learned what looked good with what, I learned to mix and match different articles of clothing 
and what accessories I could wear with them, and it just helped me to improve the confidence in my personal appearance. Now the final thing that I did in college that helped me to improve my confidence quite a bit was participate a lot in public presentations. A lot of my classes involved group works where at the end we had to do some sort of presentation to the entire classroom and our teacher and then we would have to undergo questioning by our professors and be able to answer those questions. By making sure that I knew the material, I not only had confidence in what I knew, but then by undergoing those presentations over and over and over again, it helped me to kind of get over that initial fear of public speaking. Nowadays, this is something that I'm typically complimented on as a strength of mine is that I can present very well. And this confidence in presentation can also translate into my interactions professionally. It has helped me to get to know new people and be able to have confident discussions about things that we both know and be able to have a good rapport with other people. So I really recommend getting involved in some form of public speaking, whether that is through presentations or debate club, something along those lines, because it can really help you to get over that initial fear of uncomfortability of being in front of other people. And that then translates into how you interact with people that you don't know. Now that we've talked about the things that I did in college, let's talk about the last thing that I've been doing since I graduated. One thing that I constantly try to do and has helped me to develop my confidence over time is by constantly trying new things. Nowadays, if I wanna try something, I typically don't let the fear of failure in that thing stop me from trying it. Getting used to failing or being bad at something helps me to be more confident and more excited to try those new things. You're not gonna be good at every single thing that you do right when you start it. But if you let that fear of being bad at something stop you, then you never have the opportunity to get better at it in the first place. So by trying things and getting used to failure, it helps you to gain confidence to go out and just do what it is that you want and not worry about if you mess up or fail because you know that you'll be able to get right back up and keep at it. All right guys, but that's going to bring us to the end of the video. If you found this video to be helpful or informative at all, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It helps the channel to grow and reach new people. If you have any thoughts, ideas, or questions, please be sure to leave a comment down below. I like to read and respond to as many of them as I can. If you're interested in more videos where I talk about confidence and personal presentation, be sure to check out this video right here where I tell you how to get a shave without razor burn. If you're interested in my most recent videos, be sure to check out this video right here. But until the next time, this is an engineer signing off.